Hello and welcome to another drawing tutorial. In this lesson I'm going to teach you a technique for drawing really high contrast scenes like this. What do we do when confronted with difficulties like this? And the answer is frisket film. Frisket film was designed for airbrushing and making stencils out of, so it's a low tack paper that is sticky but it also removes cleanly from paper without damaging the surface. So the first step is to draw the scene and there's really not much to this scene except for the birds. So I went ahead and I lightly drew the lines that I want with graphite and I've drawn my bird for one pass but then in order to use frisket film you have to darken those lines up. Let's take your time, make sure your pencil is nice and sharp Remember, all you need for this step is the exterior line. Then take a piece of frisket film, big enough to cover that whole bird. There's one side that's dull and the other side is very shiny. You need to do your drawing on the shiny side. Press it down, so then you trace your lines a second time, this time onto the frisket film. Then I use a sharp pair of scissors and I cut that out. Every line that you make is going to leave a mark on your drawing. So in this stage you need to be extra careful. Don't make any jagged cuts that you don't want to have showing up. When you have your bird all cut out, before you take the backing off just put it up against the drawing and make sure that everything looks good. You can fix things a lot more easily before it gets sticky. And then if it's a small shape, you can just remove the whole thing. Just peel off the backing, and I'm going to tamp it down. And then you can start to lay in the background tone. I'm going to flip the paper so that I can put all my strokes in with ease. And in order to get these edges really nice and precise, I'm going to protect those as well. So I'm just going to protect those edges. But once that is protected, then it is going to be very easy to lay down tone very quickly. And I'm just using the pencil on the side and I'm going to fill this in then I can use a chamois cloth, wrap it around my finger, and blend smooth with circle strokes. Now I have a base tone, and from here I can darken it up and I can add some of that stone texture. So I'm seeing some lines in the stone, and then I can darken up one side just the way I see in the picture. And then I just have some shading, and I'm going to do that with some straight strokes and some circle strokes like this. So then let me do another pass of blending, this time with my little stomp. But I'm going to blend all the way up to the tape, and that way I'll have a nice precise edge when I take that tape off. Okay, then I'm going to remove my tape, and those edges are nice and sharp. I'm going to have a bird that is that sharp when I take the tape off of there too. But now I'm going to do similar work, except in this space behind the bird, so it's going to be a little bit different looking. Now I'm going to turn my paper and make those same back and forth strokes, going all the way up to the tape, and I'm going to establish a base tone the same way that I did in the other stone structure. So same thing as before. I have my base tone, and then I'm going to blend the first pass with my chamois circle stroke all the way up to the tape and I don't want to lose that really clean line of division so I'm going to be a little bit more careful when I get up to that edge. Okay so that's looking really good. I want a nice clean edge though for the step that he's standing on so I'm going to protect this as well. My frisket film again And then I can have the freedom to go right over the top and make these really dark shapes that I see in the rock. So for this step, I'm just going now and I'm referring to my reference material 
I'm finding some of those dark shadows. Let's pan up and I'll show you how to work around the bird and carve out some of these little intricate shapes and interesting rocky forms. It's a mottled rocky background so I'm just going to have some irregular shapes, some darks and lights and make sure that those lines around your bird stay nice and dark. The darker the contrasts are the better it's going to pop when you take that tape off. So I start with some lines and then I move the pencil to the side and I fill in some larger shapes. What I can also do is take my kneaded eraser and pluck out some of these areas where I see some lighter shapes. So I'm doing the same thing only in the reverse. But again, make sure that you do that in multiple places so it doesn't look like a mistake. But then you just have to work, 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 take your time, fill in these irregular forms. And then I'm going to use my small tortillon and blend these dark shapes a little bit. So I'm just going to go over the top working around those highlights that I just plucked out and I'm going to smooth my shapes. I'm going to do this work until this entire back wall is filled with texture. We can see that worked really well and now I'm going to do some work under the bird and in this shadow area. I'm going to freehand this ledge and then I will start by drawing the shape of the shadow. Make sure that the shadow is consistent with the body. And then the shadow comes down. And all of this area back here is in shadow. So I'm going to tilt again and go back with my sharp, soft charcoal pencil and really darken this shadow up. I'm just going to go almost up to the edge, but not quite and then this is all very dark. Then the shadow is too small to blend with a chamois cloth, so I'm going to go straight from the beginning, blending with my tortillon. Use little circle strokes to disguise your pencil lines, and go all the way up to the tape. I'm going to take that shadow all the way over the edge of the stone, and I'm just placing this tone with the stomp that I've already blended the really dark stuff with, so it still has quite a bit of tone on it and this way I have a natural gradation from dark to light and my base tone is already taken care of. So then I want to add some texture. I'm going to pull out some mottled white areas using the tip of my kneaded eraser and then I'll go back and emphasize those shapes with some dark speckles in between and these steps together will help this to look like granite. On this side it's very light struck so I'm just going to go over the top with a little bit of pencil work on the side and I'm going to leave it unblended so that the rough texture of the paper will make a sort of natural rock texture for me. The same thing can work on this slightly darker area of the rock. So see again if I just leave this unblended I can get a natural rocky look and I'll do that same work on this already shaded side, so I've, I have a base tone that's already blended smooth, but then to develop some of those darker texture shapes, I can just use a pencil on the side and just let the pencil make the rock texture for me. Underneath this rocky edge here it gets very dark, and I'll leave some of the white highlights, and then just fill down all the way to the line. Then I have two more little very straight lines. So I'm going to lay in that straight line with the photograph. So now I have a better sense of where I need to fill in that base tone and I can just fill straight across but I'm going to fill all the way down to the tape. Then use that chamois and create a base tone on the rock. I don't want to get rid of all of this textured so I'm not going to wipe, I'm going to stipple with my finger bouncing it up and down like this and that way I get a little bit of blending but I'm not blending everything away. As I write the letters, I'm always referring to this space between this very straight line and the top of the letter because I want them to be consistent. I don't want to make any physical mark on the drawing, but of course if it helps, you can always lay down something like this. Just draw the base of each letter like this, and I can just fill in the top of the letter. The top of the crack is going to need to be darkened up substantially too. I get that just by looking at the reference material. But now let's take the tape off our bird and see what we've got. 
What works really well for this is a razor blade, but it's it's just very, very delicate. It doesn't really need to be said. I'm sure that you could easily cut your paper, so you need to use a lot of care. But there, you can see the really, really sharp, clean outline of the bird that you can't get any other way. But then to add detail to the bird, you're just going to go and draw those interior lines, keeping your reference material very close. So here is his gray wing. It gets really light struck, and then it turns into this darker tail. Then he has some color on the beak, and then his eye. Just place the eye very carefully. And once those larger shapes are in place, you can start to develop some of the details on the wings. And think of those details as more shapes, just smaller shapes. So now, looking at the shadow on this gray wing, this is a new shape. So I'm looking at that entire gray shape and putting it down using circle strokes on the side of my pencil to hide my pencil lines and just slowly filling in like this. You have to be very consistent and since you have a handy reference material to look at, just let that always guide you with where the grays are, what the shapes should look like, and how the highlights fall on the bird. And once you have the, some of those larger shapes in place, and you can use your little tortillon and you can blend those with little circle strokes again. And make sure that as you work, you're also looking for what's called lost lines and sharp lines. Lost lines are like right here. You can't see anything very distinctly. It just sort of fades from gray to white. And then you also have very hard lines, like up here and right here, where you can see a definite edge. Those definite edges you can bring out more with a pencil then you can just blend out one side and you'll still have a crisp contrast edge, but it won't look like a drawn line. And that's exactly what you're going for in your realistic drawings. Okay, so let me take a little bit of time to finish up the bird and do some more work on that lettering. And then I'll come back to you and show you what I've come up with. Okay, we're coming right along. I just need to do a few more finishing touches here and the bird picture will be all done. See how once I have these letters, I can just do my shading right over the top, and that way it looks like the letters are in the stone and not on top of the stone. So as you draw or paint, make sure that you're continually planning in your head, how am I going to draw this, in what order, what needs to be there first, what needs to be there second. And especially when you're working in a high contrast piece like this, you need to plan ahead because you can't protect your whites after you've already covered them up. Now this might be as far as I need to push it. So I'm going to remove my tape and see what I think about it. All right, there's the bottom. There's the top. So that concludes this month's drawing tutorial. I hope that you've taken some things away with you that you can use in your own studio. And I thank you so much for watching.